We got married fairly young and we both just decided for many reasons we didn't want kids. And then at some point we heard the acronym DINK and I think just really fell in love with it. There are more Americans that are deciding not to have children and it's purposeful. This new trend has led to the rise of a new type of household, more commonly referred to as DINKs, dual income, no kids. Oh yeah, dual income, no kids, that's perfect for us. That's absolutely right. <laughs> children are the death of net worth. Pretty crude, uh, but honestly very true. This household configuration of dual income partners living alone without children is on the rise. In 2022, it was around 43% of households, and that's about a 7% increase from a decade previously. In 2022, 43% of Americans surveyed said they'd want to get married. But just a little more than a quarter said they were sure about wanting children. The term dink is becoming more prominent now because of financial challenges. And they see children as just another financial challenge that maybe they, they don't want to take on. So what's it like to live with a dual income and no children? And will it be the future of American households? According to a 2023 survey of Dinks, finance played a major role in their decision to not have children. More than a quarter of respondents said they simply aren't able to financially support a child at the moment. When we advise clients about having children, we honestly don't even give them the full real details and the real numbers. It's one of those things, if you actually see the math of it all, it might make you decide to not have children. <laughs> It costs a family an estimated $310,605 to raise a child born in 2015 to age 18, adjusted for higher future inflation. And that doesn't even include the cost of college. So if you look at inflation it, within the child care market, it surpasses general overall inflation within um, the economy. Some couples are contemplating having children at the same time that they're still paying off student loans that they incurred when they were 18 to 22 years old. One of my very closest friends, uh, she's been struggling with the reality that the take-home pay she makes is about equal to what childcare would be, that's a really hard position to be in. Seeing our friends really struggle with that balancing act has, I think, made me appreciate the flexibility that we have financially because we don't have children. Besides saving on childcare, Dinks can also fully reap the benefits of combining their finances to look at both of our incomes coming in and see how we're able to handle all of that because we don't have extra finances with a child. It's much more comfortable. We get to focus more on the things that we want to do and, and saving a lot of that money for the future and worry less about the day-to-day the -day finances of the house and our bills. Money isn't the only expense that Dinks can save on. The free time is actually one of the biggest things for me. So we built me a little office slash bedroom out here. We definitely have some more expensive hobbies. I uh, build mechanical keyboards, like uh, computer keyboards in my spare time, and just parts and stuff for that can be very expensive. Not having children has given us the freedom to pursue other things, remodeling our home. Um, I'm a beekeeper. I'm really handy and I like doing stuff around the house. I wouldn't have the time to just do that after work if I feel like it, if I had, you know, a child to care for. Fewer expenses leave Dinks with more disposable income to play with. Disposable income is power, it's stability, and for many couples, it's security. The security that having, you know, six months of income saved for emergencies gives you, that security was so helpful to us during COVID when I was out of work for six months. Let's have like a smaller tractor style next year, we're gonna get a zero. We have more tolerance for chaos, I think, because of our savings. Our new savings goal, which is like our shoot for the stars and hit the moon kind of is saving four grand a month. 
According to census data, dinks can save 9% more for retirement each year compared to dual-income couples with children. Another 2021 study found that childless adults aged 55 and older had a personal median net worth of $153,900, compared to $130,400 for biological parents. If you have a dollar and if you have to choose how to use it, a DINK can prioritize savings, retirements, investments, both in the equities market, as well as things like real estate or second properties. The hardest part of investing is just having the cash to do it. And so when you don't have your cash going to expenses that are related to children, that cash can go into those investment goals. We started investing in our early 20s. I feel really safe because we have this strong nest egg of ETFs that are accessible and fairly liquid. And then we also have our long-term savings, which are, you know, tied up in IRAs. We can choose what our aging years look like because we've saved to plan for that eventuality. It is well documented that the younger you are when you start your savings and your retirement portfolio, the better off you are in the long run in terms of aggregate savings and your ability to accrue savings and wealth. Just take the $310,605 it would take for a middle-income married family to raise a child. While child expenses can vary significantly by age and location, that could easily represent more than $15,000 in otherwise investable funds per year. Consider the power of annually compounding interest, and that $15,000 per year can grow to more than $500,000 in just 18 years, assuming 7% annual returns. This nest egg could also help Dinks secure more assets for themselves. Dual earner adults living together who both have jobs and have been saving are really able to put um, a heftier, relatively large down payment on a home, um, which then reduces their monthly mortgage and has all of these other benefits. It's, you're paying less interest over the long run. I was fortunate enough to have a good little nest egg gifted to me by my grandparents, um, and that helped us buy our first house. But then from there, living in that house, living in a place with a lower cost of living like Utah, having dual income helped us build all this savings so that when we sold that home and moved to Massachusetts, we had an even larger nest egg that allowed us to buy a more expensive home in a higher cost of living area. I'm not totally sure where we would be if we had a child as well. That extends beyond just purchasing a home. There are lots of big item, big ticket investments that we um, tend to make earlier on in adulthood to the extent that we can pay as much of it as possible up front, that does have a rippling benefit for us as we age. But the rise of dinks isn't such great news for the economy as a whole. Historically, lower birth rates have been associated with slower economic growth and critical social programs such as Social Security depend heavily on population growth. We shouldn't strive to have a generation of young adults that are not reproducing. That would not be he healthy for society. It wouldn't be healthy for the economy. Um, it wouldn't be healthy for us as we age. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why we do want to take investments in the next generation seriously. For Dinks, the biggest challenges are often not financial. And I think we freaked a lot of people out when we were just a young married couple and that was all. There was no baby afterwards. I had family members asking if something was wrong because it's been five years of a young, healthy couple not producing a child. I think that there is a self-care aspect that is minimized when you're a dink. So there are many mom groups or, you know, daddy daughter dances. There aren't groups for, hey, I'm a professional woman and I just want to go home and read a book and take care of myself tonight. I think on the other side of that, there can be times where in certain circumstances and circles, it's harder to make friends. There is also the potential for more financial responsibility from other family members. There could be additional pressure as dinks get older. 
for people within their family to assume that they can take care of certain obligations. For example, if you have an aging parent, dinks might be the ones that are relied upon because it's presumed you have disposable income or you have disposable time to take on these responsibilities. According to experts, the number one advice for dinks is to prioritize savings and figure out clear goals for the future. If anybody is considering becoming a dink, as a financial planner, I highly recommend that strategy. I recommend it to my clients. When my clients tell me that's an intentional choice they're gonna make, I am a big fan of it. With that disposable income, make a budget. How do you wanna spend it? Make sure you put aside some money for fun, but also make sure you put aside some money for investments and they can be traditional or non-traditional investments and then revisit it annually to make sure it still makes sense. I think if you're considering not having children in your life, make sure your partner is on the same page as you and that you have confidence in that value in isolation without your partner too. Yeah. Don't go into the dink lifestyle just like, oh, I don't have kids, so I just have more money and can do whatever. It still takes the work of like planning for your future, putting money away. If you're not gonna have kids, Make sure you still save money for your future because the world is a weird place right now and who knows what it's gonna be like in another 30, 40 years when we go to retire.